Order. If I could ask members to resume their seats, please. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Colin Gildenew has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister for Health. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should rise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Can I ask the clerk to please read the question? To ask the Minister of Health to outline the reasons for the change in restrictions in respect of travel from Spain introduced on 26 July 2020. I call the Minister for Health, Mr Robin Swan. Thank you very much, Mr Principal De Deputy Speaker, and I thank the member for bringing the question. Uh, the Health Protection Coronavirus International Travel Regulations Northern Ireland 2020 came into operation on the 8th of June. On July 10, the list of exempt countries was inserted, allowing those who had been in these countries to be exempted from the self-isolation period of 14 days when they arrived in Northern Ireland. On Saturday, the 25th of July, I made an urgent amendment to remove Spain from the list of exempted countries, meaning that from Sunday, the 26th of July, those arriving in Northern Ireland from Spain are again required to self-isolate for the full 14-day period. My decision, which has now been supported by the executive, was based on detailed scientific information which was shared with me on Saturday. The key points to note are that since last week, the weekly case rate for Spain has broadly doubled. Spain is following the same trajectory as Serbia, which was removed from the regulations following the same process on the 11th of July. Spain now conducts less tests than the UK, so the true prevalence compared to the UK could be even higher than this data represents. Areas of Spain have been reintroducing lockdown restrictions, particularly in the Barcelona region. The weekly case count in Spain has doubled from ca 4,489 to ca 9,575 this week. This rise in disease has been seen in 15 of the 19 regions and autonomous cities of Spain. The total number of tests performed has increased, as I said. However, the proportion of these which are positive has also increased from 1.4% to 4.3% during July, with the greatest increase in the last week. I discussed this advice with the ministers from all four UK regions, and the decision was taken to remove Spain from the list of exempt countries from midnight and Saturday night. I recognise that the timing of the change would have a significant impact on travellers arriving early on Sunday morning. However, the evidence was considered so strong that delay was not feasible. The risk to the Northern Ireland population was too great to delay another day. I will continue to make decisions based on scientific information to determine which countries may be removed or added to the exemption list. I will move quickly to remove any country when the evidence supports this. The health and safety of the people of Northern Ireland is my main priority. I call Mr Colin Gildenew for a supplementary. Um, Gorham Agat. Premier last can call you, and I will remove my mask just to, to ask the question because I realise it can cause additional difficulties for people with hearing um, difficulties to pick up on what's being said. So um, I'd like to thank the Minister for his answer. Considering the ongoing confusion around travel advice and restrictions, would the Minister agree the importance of convening a British Irish Council meeting to agree a consistent approach to the issue of travel into and across these islands? I, I think the, the chair of the, his committee, or the committee for, for a supplementary in regards to this, and I'm sure the member is aware there's a north-south ministerial council meeting um, actually called for Friday where this is the main topic of discussion. So I'm sure that this in an incidence in Spain and other countries and how we manage that on, on an all-islands approach will be up for discussion at that point. Uh, no, this is a, not a committee. This is not the committee. The Minister has given the answer. And so, sorry, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, if you do allow me, the North South Ministerial Council, and I'm sure if there's any directions come from that in regards to British Irish Council, the First and the Deputy First Minister will take direction from that. Mr Alex Easton. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. Um, could I ask the, the, the Minister, what is the process when somebody comes back from Spain and lands at the airport? Um, what, what happens at that stage so uh, that the public actually know? I know it's, you have to go and isolate for two weeks, but is there some sort of process at the airports in place to uh, make sure that holidaymakers and residents coming back know exactly what they have to do? 
Uh, and I thank the member for first point. There, will, there is information points at, um, at the airports as people arrive. There will also be announcements made on the aeroplanes as people arrive as to the steps that they should be taking. Uh, there is an international uh, travel locator form, which is now mandatory. Um, from anybody landing in Northern Ireland from one of the red countries, and that must be must be completed. There's a penalty of £60 for anybody who fails to complete that form, so the test, trace and protect system should work if it's necessary to follow them up and make sure that they are observing the 14 days isolation that is required should somebody come in from uh, a quarantine country. Before I call Mr Pat Shane, could I again remind members to rise in their place if they wish to ask a question. Mr Pat Shane. Um, could I ask the Minister, how is he going to address the uh, confusion and differences in the travel advice uh, that exists at the minute? Uh, and I'm not just talking about north-south, but also east-west, where there seems to be a, 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 a lot of anomalies in terms of the advice that's being given out. Carmel. Yeah, um, I thank the member um, for, for the point that he raises, and I think it's a valid one. It's one I raised with uh, the Minister of Health, uh, Matt Hancock, on Saturday night, because there did seem to be common, in, or there did seem to be an inconsistency uh, from the advice that has been given from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in regards to what is actually coming out from the, the health departments across all four nations. Um, I've written today to the Foreign and Commonwealth Office asking for clarity, and they, could they actually consider the guidance that they're given in regards to travel from the island specifically, and uh, what seems to be a contradiction to what is actually coming out and what was agreed by all four health ministers. So that matter has been, uh, has been raised by, both, to, by myself to both the health minister and the Foreign and Commonwealth Office, and I hope they receive clarity and specifics to that, because it is causing some confusion for those people who are traveling, uh, or maybe even intend to travel still to the islands, which I would encourage them not to at this point. Mr. Colin McGrath. Thank you very much, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for coming to give um, answers to this very important issue, which is causing great concern to people. And I appreciate from his own advice that the incubation period uh, could be up to seven days. But is there a method of prioritising testing for those individuals on that seventh day? Because if results could come back within 48 hours, that could save five days off the quarantine period for them, which may, would enable many of them to get back to work. Many of whom are, are teachers who were off at this period and need to get back into to school to work as quickly as possible. Oh, and the, the member did raise this with me personally by text message yesterday in regards to to the ability for someone who is currently in Spain to book a test on, on the return. That is not something that our testing system is set up to. It is actually set at this moment in time for people who are symptomatic, uh, but it's something that you know, we are looking at. Should it be, should it be necessary? Or should it be actually an advantage? Uh, but I wouldn't want mm -hmm. testing to be a reassurance or a second line for somebody who wanted simply to book a holiday to, to a, a country that is actually in the red area, in the red zone, that they could rely on testing when they come home to allow them to, to get back to the workplace earlier. But it's not just, as, and as I said to the member in my answer when he, he asked me yesterday, it's in regard to the incubation period of COVID-19. So the initial test when somebody lands may be negative, but there is an incubation period when we, when we reckon up to about seven days where a second test may be necessary. So it is something we are currently looking at, but it is something that we need to be consistent across all nations as well. Mr John Blair. Deputy Speaker, thank you. Can I ask the Minister if he give any clarification or information on uh, how or if there is a, a joined up executive approach in this? Uh, for example, if the Department for Economy are working with employers, um, if the Department of Finance are working with in holiday insurance companies, and if both or either are working with the Department of Health in this regard? Ian, I, I thank the member for, for his question. He makes a valid point. He may not be aware there was actually an executive meeting just prior to, to this urgent oral, oral question. For the, that it was the specific and the only item on the agenda to be discussed as to what other supports other departments could, be, could actually be put in place. So the Department of Economy and the Minister for Economy is now engaging with employers to make sure or, or request that, that there is a flexible support to those people who have been in Spain and now face a 14 days quarantine. The Department of Economy is also going to engage with the travel insurers, as he suggested. Uh, the Department of Finance, the Minister of Finance, is going to engage with his counterparts in Westminster in regards to furlough, to see if anybody who had been furloughed could actually 
re-engage with furlough when they do return from Spain as well, so that there's as many support mechanisms uh, in place as possible. Mm -hmm. And again, the Department of Communities and Military Communities will see what additional packages on support are, that are within, within the remit of the Northern Ireland Executive. And the Executive Office will look at update and uh, information on NI Direct so that anyone who is currently in Spain or intending to go to Spain can actually get all that information in one central location rather than having sources elsewhere. Currently, NI Direct gives information for people who may be looking to go on holiday, but we need it updated for those who are currently in Spain and are caught in that situation that they have the information for what they do when they return. Mr. John O'Dowd. Uh, thank you, uh, Pre Vlas and I want to return to the British Irish Council uh, meeting and the need for a British Irish Council meeting. Um, the Minister has taken a decision in relation to Spain because of the evidence suggests we should restrict travel. Uh, there are parts of these islands where infection rates may be as high, if not higher, than Spain. Would the Minister not agree that the British Irish Council meeting would be an opportunity for all the administrations to share advice and give reassurance to the public that the best advice is being used? And I, again, I thank the member, and I, I realise the political point that he's trying to make in regards to engagement of the British Irish Council. And uh, look, I'll attend any meeting that develops uh, positive health advice for the people of Northern Ireland. So whether it's North, South, British, Irish, I, I'd be supportive of any meeting that provides a consistent approach and consistent guidance to the people of Northern Ireland across these islands. Mr. Alan Chambers. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, Minister, given that uh, this is a, a fast-changing uh, situation, what advice would you give to anyone who is currently considering overseas travel that is not essential? Um, I, I thank the member for, for, for his question, and I'll read him the, the current advice that is actually there on NI Direct. and It actually says, you should carefully consider your holidays and travel options in light of the continuing COVID-19 threat. A staycation is one way of mitigating the risks while also supporting the local economy. If you're holiday, holidaying abroad, you may have to self-isolate for a period of 14 days on your return home, depending on which country you have visited. So in regards to the ever-changing situation, in regards to coronavirus in other countries and other places, that is something I would ask people to take great cognizance of, because it is, as we've already seen with Spain, this is something that can change at a, a very rapid pace. So the guidance that's there on NI Direct, fully supported by the entirety of the Northern Ireland Executive, is one I would encourage people of Northern Ireland to read when planning their holidays. Mr Matthew O'Toole. Mr Principal Deputy Speaker, does the Health Minister have any specific guidance for family members or household people who share households with people who have just come back from Spain? So if, for example, it's a young person who's come back on holiday and he's, he or she is returning to his parents or her parents' house, what is the guidance for other people who share that household? Should the person who's returning be self-isolating in a separate part of the house? How does that work and is there specific guidance that will be given to family members and householders? And again, I think the member almost answers his, his, his own question. Um, the guidance on self-isolation and how that is managed has been there from, from the early days in regards to how we manage coronavirus. That information on self-isolation stands, so it is isolating in rooms separate, if possible, use different bathrooms, use different bedrooms, make sure you're not in the kitchen at the same time. So that advice and guidance is well there, it's documented, it's available on NI Direct on the Department of Health websites, but we'll reiterate it again for anybody returning from Spain, again, so that that entire package of information is there to support them. Mr. Andrew Muir. Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker, um, Dublin Airport is a popular um, airport for people from Northern Ireland. What arrangements are in place for data sharing in terms of people who are travelling back from countries which are in the red list? And what risks do you uh, consider that uh, people travelling through Dublin Airport would not be self-isolating in Northern Ireland without that data sharing? Um, the member um, raises a point which I think I'm on, on public record now, thanks to another leaked letter. Um, that I have raised uh, concerns in regards to data sharing with my counterpart um, in the Republic of Ireland. Uh, we have information points at all airports across these islands in regards that indicates that the, the completion of the travel locator form is for the place of residence or your final travel. So anybody landing in Dublin coming to Northern Ireland must complete that travel locator form. Um, we have information points at all those airports, all those points of landing but I have raised concerns with my counterpart in the Republic of Ireland that we don't have a process whereby that information and those people who are completing the form is now being shared openly 
with ourselves. So again, it's, a, it's something that is on the, the agenda for discussion at the North-South Ministerial Council meeting on, on Friday, because it is important that we do have that information to make sure we can reinforce the 14-day self-isolation that we're requiring for people returning from, from those countries that are now in the red list. Mr. Paul Given. Mr. Speaker, um, Minister, for those people that have been caught up in this change at the 11th hour, uh, returning from uh, Spain, um, a number of them will have went on that in good faith that they would have been able to come home and return to work, some of them even within your own department. Um, but the policy there is that they then need to self-isolate, and that comes off their leave. Will there be a sympathetic approach taken to uh, employees that are faced in the circumstances where they could be forced now to use their own compulsory holiday leave because of the decision that was taken? And I think you know, the member for that point, is some, well, in regards to a previous answer, it's some his party uh, colleague, the Minister of Economy, is now speaking with the, the major employer. Are representative bodies and major employers to ask them to be as flexible as possible. So if people can be supported by working from home, they can be supported by additional or even reintroducing the furlough payments as well, so that they don't have to use actually sick leave to take that fortnight um, self-isolation period. It's something I would encourage my ministerial colleagues where possible that anybody isn't penalised, and if they can be supported by working from home for that fortnight, that they should be. Dr. Kiva Archibald. Graham, I get privileged to and um, I thank the Minister for his responses, um, and I'm glad to hear of the Executive's approach to this issue that you outlined to Mr. Blair. Um, are there any exemptions to the quarantine period, for example, for essential or key workers? Graham, I um, unfortunately, because we're now looking at Spain as a red list, uh, that list of exemptions is pretty minimal, if, if non existent, um, because of the, de the, the, the level of prevalence of COVID-19 in that country. So we have been asked in regards to could health workers be exempt from that sort of point of view as well. But the risk then we have if it, if for the seventh day or the tenth day if they, they prove positive or actually um, have been asymptomatic during that period of time, there is a risk to the people that they have been working with or the people or the patients they've come into contact as well. So in regards to there is no or limited very limited exemptions from anybody coming in from a red country. But I'll get exact details for the member if that's helpful. Thank you, Minister. No other members indicated to me that they wish to ask a question. Item number four on the order paper is the adjournment. Before I put the question, I remind members that the Assembly is scheduled to sit again tomorrow. The question is that the Assembly do not adjourn. The Assembly is adjourned.